Good morning, Dr. J here. Uh, welcome aboard. There's some things I just want to talk about. Can I just go over what I've been seeing for this current time? Um, as you all know, I'm a Christian woman. So what, I, what I'm talking about, I'm saying from that perspective. I have um, a couple, of, well, it was a one week ago, I had a vision where I was just taken up over the coast of California. And in that season, um, it, was the, it was going into evening time and the lights were coming on across the country. And I could see and hear the lights of each home. And I could hear the deep cries out of people's hearts for what their needs are. Some were financial, some were abandonment issues, some were single moms and their needs and overwhelmed and depression and alcoholism and different addictions that are occurring in people's lives and their cries to be healed and released and then sicknesses and disease and those that were in need of that and then the earth spun kind of like we move with Google Earth these days. And I was up over the UK, we crossed the Atlantic, and I was up over the UK. And I could hear those cries of people again. And very similar. And they're just crying out for their Savior and their Lord. Um, and as I just sat in that, I was like, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I, I was praying for, for him the Lord to come into each one of their lives because they're, they're, there's just such a high need. Everyone has needs in their lives. I have needs, you have needs, we all have needs. And the Lord wants to meet us there. And so a few days pass and I'm awoken at uh, 2.16 in the morning and the Lord has me go to Song of Solomon. And as I go to Song of Solomon, I get to, I'm just going to kind of read a little bit of it, okay? As I get to Song of Solomon, I hear the Lord, you know, telling me to go to chapter 4. So I go to chapter 4, and I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. You know, we, it's our bridegroom king speaking to us, okay? And he is talking, he is speaking to you personally and me personally, okay? Because we're his bride, we're the bride. He's coming for the bride, right? And he sees us as beautiful and strong, okay? My darling bride, my private paradise, fastened to my heart. A secret spring are you that no one else can have. My bubbling fountain, hidden from public view. What a perfect partner to me now that I have you. It's just beautiful. So he goes on to say, when I'm near you, I smell aromas of finest spices for many clusters of my exquisite fruits grow now within your garden. And so all of a sudden, he's got these nine fruits that I'm going to just read about, okay? And as I read about them, this, this, the, these fragrances are arising to our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and they are coming from him into us, okay? And so one of them is the, the pomegranate of passion. So pomegranate represents exaltation. Like, I exalt you, Lord. I exalt thee. I exalt thee, O God. And, in, and we are, it says in Revelations, pillars in the temple of our God. And so the temple of the Holy Spirit resides in us. But at the top of these temples, temple of the of these pillars are engraved and etched in it is the pomegranate the mighty pomegranate you know it's it's um it's touted as the most healthiest juice in the world so there it is being exalted again but this exaltation is coming from the lord into us and us into the lord and so then, then there is the uh, henna from heaven. Henna uh, can be used as a dye and, and as a heavy paste, and oil will come dripping off of it. And so this oil represents the ransom price, this, this heavy 
anointing oil, heavenly oil just dripping over us. And it's coming off of him and it's coming into us and then we reflect it back to him. So these fragrances are moving back and forth from the king and into us and he can smell them coming out of us as we just hunger and thirst for more of his righteousness, right? And then spikenard is so sweet. Spikenard is the light that each one of us are a part of the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. We're a facet that reflect his light and life. Saffron shining. Saffron is a spice. It's one of the most costly spices, okay, that we use in cooking. And did you know that 75,000 to 125,000 flowers of saffron, it takes that many to make one pound of saff the saffron spice. It's costly. It costs us something. It costs us something to spend time with Jesus. It costs Jesus the cross to have us as his bride and this flowing back and forth of love coming through each of us. Um, and then the fragrant calamus from the cross. So this is, it was purchased, this calamus to represent being purchased and redeemed and the flow. It's, an, it's another fragrant oil that's moving to and from us, to Jesus, from Jesus, to Jesus, from Jesus to Jesus from us, you know, it's moving back and forth. And then the sacred cinnamon was released by the priest in the Holy of Holies. It was the smell of holiness. Holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Uh, and then the branches of scented woods. So these woods would be incense that would go up before the Lord, similar to our tears that are incense before the Lord. The, the incense before the Lord of this fragrance that would go beyond the golden altar into the holy of holies. Okay, And then eight was myrrh, the tears from a tree. So the myrrh tree, when the tears rip in, this tears or resin will rip out to seal the wound on the tree. And so it's the sacrificial suffering of Christ that Christ did and that our own suffering comes, you know. So those tears become healed wounds that the Lord moves through us in. And then aloe as eagles ascending. So aloe is a healing balm. It has great healing properties as eagles um, ascending. When an eagle is sick or an eagle wants to be healed, it goes high up as close as it can get to the sun. And everything bad falls off of it, and the healing from the sun's rays then bring healing to us individually. As aloe, as eagles ascending, a healing balm. So beautiful. So as I sat with all of that, I then had a girlfriend here over the weekend who's just a gift, and we were talking about different issues personally that I have, and um, just just within myself, different different emotions that I experience, and I was just weeping when she left, and I sat in that. I just sat with the Lord, and I'm like, Lord, I just I want to be healed, and He took me to. A, a sermon from John G. Lake called The Calling of the Soul. Okay, so I'm going to read you a little excerpt out of it. And so when I go to read this, here's John G. Lake. He's in Johannesburg in the 1920s or 18, 1918. He is ministering in South Africa and people are getting healed. And so here's this man now who couldn't make it to the healing center to receive there and so someone had written him a letter and so he opens he goes out into the field because he has been diagnosed with consumption or tuberculosis and he's going to die and so he is reading this letter from his friend and this is what happens von buren took the letter and went out into the fields and got down under a thorn tree and spread the letter out before god then he began to pray god if you can do these things for the people at Johannesburg, you can do something for me. I have been a Christian for 18 years, and I have prayed and prayed for certain things which have not come to pass. God, if others can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, surely I can. If others' hearts are made pure by the power of God, the power that made their hearts pure can make mine pure also. 
If others have been healed, then Jesus can heal me. As thus, he gave himself to God and opened his soul to heaven. Suddenly the spirit came upon him and he became the most transformed creature I ever knew. God moved into the man. For 18 days, he walked as though overshadowed by the spirit of God. God called, talking continuously to his soul, directing him to this one and that one, to judges and lawyers, to statesmen and physicians, to the rich and to the poor. When he would reach them, the Spirit of God would pour forth through his soul such messages of God that in many cases they fell down and wept. This is the point, okay, of the story I want to get to. For he said for 18 years he had prayed for the real conversion, the transformation of his wife, and it had not come to pass. But that morning after the Lord had baptized him in the Holy Ghost, a new prayer came into his heart. A new depth had been touched in this man's nature, in the man's nature, in my nature, in your nature. And from that great inner depth flowed out to God a cry that had been going out of his soul for years. But that morning, before he reached the house to be home with her, she had given her heart to God. And in three months, all of his family, his wife and 11 children, and himself had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. The desire of which Jesus spoke, for when he spoke of desire, he spoke of the same call of the soul, the calling of our innermost being, the God-shaped hole in our heart, this innermost cry of our heart was not the simple attitude of the outer man. Certainly it included it. Perhaps the desire in the beginning was simple, that of the mind. But as the days and the years passed, the desirability of obtaining grew in his soul. That is the character of desire that Jesus spoke of when he said, blessed are those that which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The spiritual action that takes place within the nature of man, that, that strong desire for God, that strong desire that you and I have for God, his ways, his great love, his knowledge, his power, causes everything else, perhaps unconsciously to ourselves, to become secondary. The soul has its paramount issues, and when the desire of your heart is intensified so that it absorbs all your energy, then the time of fulfillment is not far away. That is the desire that brings the answers. It is creative desire. That's the desire, our desire to, to have the very nature of God living inside of us, the hope of restoration to our hearts, to our souls. When we think about, we bring about our, our minds, you know, our minds, our, our spirit man, our desire to be like Jesus, to, for my body to reflect the kingdom of heaven. Um, so I go through all this. It's the creative desire of the Lord that he gave us his nature and so that nature would well up inside of us and so i come back to all the fragrances we talk about and those aromas and that longing and the cost it takes for us to be intimate with the lord what if that is it what if that is it what if that's going to bring about those changes in you so i just I release to you the hunger and thirst for more of god's righteousness so that you can be filled and healed and receive his power and his love and his sound mind. So I release that into you today, the, that desire, that stirring up of the gift of God within you. That is God's desire for us as a church because we're one nation under God. That means regardless of where we are in the world, we are all one new race of man together in God, looking and hungry. And so I just want to encourage you with all hope. You know, we help each other take our next step together towards wellness and Christ. We're together. We're in this together. And so I hope this blesses you. I look forward to um, hearing your thoughts. And don't forget to click on the video and subscribe. Okay? Enjoy your week. Bless you.